Okay, I think we're crisis averted now. Thank you very much for your patience. Um, so our presentation today, we're talking about high school um, graduation assessments or exams, um, sometimes also the matriculation or university entrance exams, but not always, just depending on, on the setup. Um, but we're talking today, um, focusing on the case of Vietnam, but I'm going to start our presentations in three parts. I'm going to start by um, talking about some of the issues and trends more broadly um, before I hand over to my colleagues who will talk about the current examination in Vietnam and then um, future directions. So I'm going to give a very high level overview of some of the trends and directions. Um, you'll notice there I say English language graduation tests but we also say foreign language tests. Um, that's because in many countries in Asia it's compulsory to take a foreign language in the exit exam, but frequently that means English, as we know. So um, we're, we're focused on English language here, um, but in some places you might see foreign language. So um, similar to what we've seen in the 1990s and early 2000s um, in Western countries, in Asia, we're seeing a, an increased policy push and focus towards communicative language teaching um, in curriculum documents and in policy documents which talk about pedagogy. For example, we see in many of the language curriculums, for example, in Thailand, Indonesia, China, South Korea, Malaysia, Vietnam, we see very specific mention of communicative language teaching pedagogy. Um, and alongside this, policy documents are now placing more emphasis and promoting a, a much stronger focus on formative assessment and classroom-based assessment practices. Um, that's obviously why we're all here today, or one of the key reasons we're here today. Um, so we'll be talking more about that um, later this afternoon. Um, similar to what we see in other countries, um, there's also an increased focus on looking at internet-based and computer-based testing practices. Um, but alongside this, we see some challenges in Asian context where, as Jonathan talked about, there are high stakes um, examinations at the end of secondary school, and we see an increasing amount of research and commentary which is um, talking about the, the mismatch that we see in communicative language teaching pedagogy and informative assessment practices and in these exit exams. So, um, as an example of, of a couple of, of comments that have been made, we see people talking about um, the focus, the traditional focus on multiple choice questions within the exit exams and the lack of focus on um, productive skills and also a focus on indirect testing of skills. So there's been um, commentary about the mismatch in what teachers are asked to do in their everyday teaching, um, and I'm seeing some nodding there, and in your formative assessment practices, and then in preparing students for um, the final exams. And so, as we just heard, um, teachers wear multiple hats, and you have a challenging role to, to juggle all of these different aspects. Um, because of, of this mismatch, there's been um, some work in some countries to look at reviewing their final exams. Um, so I'm going to talk about two case studies. I'm going to talk a little bit, just very briefly, about China and then about South Korea and let you know um, some of the changes and, and the planned changes that they focused on and um, talk a little bit about the success or otherwise of them. So first of all, looking at China. Um, for me, it's amazing in China, they have over 9 million test takers each year taking their final high school exam. Um, that's nearly double the population of my country, New Zealand, so I find that very um, difficult to get my head around. Um, but it's a very high stakes, high pressured exam, and you know, Jonathan talked about 
IELTS and the amount of kind of effort that goes in um, to ensuring students get good grades um, in, in the Gaokao or the National College Entrance Examination, we know that parents um, spend a lot of money um, to support their children in extra um, classes to, to try and um, increase their score. So, um, quote here that 43 percent of 10,000 parents who were interviewed um, said that they spend over 20 percent of their annual family income on their children and supporting them for um, the test. So we know that um, the test is clearly very high stakes in China. The results from the test um, will um, contribute to decisions about admissions and determine which college or university students are able to enter. Um, universities are tiered according to um, province and also the quality of the university and there are different cutoff scores um, depending on those different factors. So, um, taking a foreign language, which is most commonly English, and you'll see there, English is, usually appears on the tables relating to the examination rather than foreign language, and it's compulsory alongside Chinese and maths in both arts and science-based programs for the final examination. Um, there's a government reform in 2013, which was very widely published in the media, which talked about removing the compulsory requirement of English um, and also did look at um, reducing the weight of the English component and increasing the weight of the Chinese component. That proposal received a lot of support um, publicly but also criticism from education specialists and the government decided to not implement that proposal um, and maintained the uh, current um, equal number of points across the three different components. However, in 2014, they did propose what were considered at the time major changes to the format of the English um, exam, which is referred to as the National Matriculation English Test, um, which has traditionally been very multiple choice dominant. Um, so in, in the um, early version, uh, 2001 was when listening came in for the first time, um, but no speaking is included here. Um, and one of the major changes in the 2014 reforms um, was around writing, which we'll look at on the next slide. Um, and there was also a conscious effort to try and reduce the reliance on the number of multiple choice questions within the test. Um, so you'll see speaking is still not included. Uh, obviously there are serious practical considerations with testing speaking on such a large scale. Um, so the, this proposal was um, talked about 2014. It's been piloted across a number of provinces and it's due for implementation um, next year. Um, there is some variation across provinces which I will mention. Um, so to talk about the changes to the writing component, the original tasks um, focused on error correction in a passage and a short practical writing task, usually a short letter. Um, in the new format it's proposed that those tasks will be replaced with integrated reading-writing tasks, so a continuation writing task based on some reading students have done, and then also a summary writing task based on reading that students have done. So the idea behind this, the intention of the test developers was to move away from a more grammar translation um, method approach, so remove the error correction, and their intention was to be promoting a more communicative focus through the test um, and to have these integrated skills. 
Um, I'll talk about, there's been some studies about the washback of that proposed change, so I'll talk a little bit about that soon, but before I do that, I'll mention another change. So another change um, that was proposed as part of this 2014 reform was to offer students of the English test um, two test opportunities. So currently, um, students come and take the test. I understand it's over a two-day period and it's a very um, big event. Um, so the proposal is just for the English component to offer students two test-taking opportunities. And the intention here is to lower the stress and anxiety of students um, taking into account how high stakes it is. And that's currently been piloted as well. And I'll talk about the early impacts of that now. Um, studies of the washback of that have found mixed findings. So um, one study has found that actually um, two test opportunities has lowered the stress and anxiety of students. However, other studies have found that actually um, student anxiety and stress has increased, or, or at least not decreased, because students are wanting to take the test at both test opportunities to increase the likelihood of, of getting a high score um, for the university entrance. Um, so, so given that, it's been argued that actually the teaching and learning process is even more test driven now there are, um, there are two possible testing opportunities. So. Um, this is a proposed change that's due for implementation next year more broadly. It's been piloted across um, five provinces. In terms of the washback of the writing changes, where it's been piloted again, there's been mixed findings. So um, one study found that there was positive washback and that there was more focus on writing in the classroom. Um, However, there have also been some studies which have found that because the writing tasks are considered quite challenging for students, that there's more pressure on teachers in the classroom to prepare students for these two tasks, um, and that because of that, other skills are potentially more neglected, um, in particular speaking. There's also been criticisms around the design of these two writing tasks, um, a suggestion that while they're designed to have a more communicative focus, actually they don't, and that they're more focused on road learning of um, particular topics. Um, there's also been criticism of the, the skills that are included um, or excluded, and that the tasks don't require students to craft an argument or to give an opinion, um, and that lack of critical thinking is required. Um, so it'll be interesting to, to keep a, a watch on, on how things progress there. Um, I should mention there's a lot of regional variation in China, so I was talking to some of my students back at my university, um, and they were very unaware of what happens in different regions because they thought that the tests that they took were the national version some. Provinces have um, additional freedom to develop their own tests, which, which have to be obviously in alignment with the national versions. Um, but cities and provinces also um, have a little bit of freedom. You can go onto the, the website and see all of the different provinces and regions, and some of them make minor amendments to test regulations. Um, the most interesting one is that one province um, is incorporating speaking into the final exam. So I just want to briefly talk about um, South Korea. Just two slides here to um, look at this case because I think it's quite interesting in what they're trying to do, or were trying to do, I should say. Um, in Korea, they tried to implement an internet-based English ability test, which they were looking at um, to see whether it would replace the current school exit exam, which is also used for university entrance, and they included speaking and writing alongside listening and reading. 
Um, so this is something that was, again, piloted with a smaller number of schools, um, and teachers were generally in favour of the changes because of the positive washback of including speaking and writing, the positive washback of that in the classroom. Um, but actually, the plan didn't go ahead for a range of reasons, and I'm, I'm not sure which of the reasons um, holds more weight here, but there were internal government changes. Um, there were also concerns that including speaking and writing might put too much pressure on learners and it might push them to make more use of private English schools rather than the, the public provision. Um, and there were also um, concerns and issues around the online testing system. So it was then proposed that um, the existing exit exam be maintained um, and that this new test be used primarily for classroom-based assessment, um, but that didn't eventuate either. So thank you, and I'm going to hand you over to my colleague Mai now, who will talk you through the current exam. presentation uh, and uh, also my pleasure to be the first person to speak about the Vietnamese context from this moment to now. Uh, and uh, so uh, what I'm going to show you may be very familiar to many of you who are already working in Vietnam, uh, but I hope to provide something new as well. So uh, as you... examination in Vietnam, inside and outside of the examination venue. And uh, as you can, uh, have seen from everywhere in the world, the high school graduation exam have a very important role. And uh, inside the classroom, the Vietnamese students also take the exam in a very standardized condition, very strict condition, so that we can make sure that the condition of the test can bring about more accurate results of the student ability. Uh, and outside the test, parents are also one key stakeholder of this test, have very strong anxiety. They are very worried that their children's life will be changed after this examination. So every year uh, in June, we often see newspaper articles like this, showing about uh, the worry of parents. And so I'm going to uh, recall that. So the foreign languages, uh, it has been considered a compulsory subject in the high school exit test in Vietnam since the, uh, the year 2015. Uh, and uh, in foreign languages, we mostly mention English because the number of test takers in English in Vietnam is 99% and only 1% for the other languages. So I'm going to say more about the format for the test of English. Uh, this is the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the pass format, the high school exit English test format to the year 2015. And uh, as you may see, the purposes of the test is like this. The purposes of the test, according to uh, the uh, decree from the government, firstly is to dis discriminate the students, then to qualify the students uh, or certify them for the high school programs. And lastly, some universities have the choice of selecting the student based on the high school results of English. Uh, and in terms of uh, the time, the test lasts 60 minutes. And uh, the type of question is MCQ, the multiple choice question. And also the expected exit performance level is B1, CFR. And uh, here the test, uh, a part of the test can be shown as an example of the first part of the test. The first part is in Vietnamese, but after that I think you, we all understand some English here. So uh, this is one sample question for the test, an MCQ question. Uh, 
that test for cat food. Uh, and uh, in the year 2017, uh, according to the announcement of the government, the test content was based mostly on the curriculum of the, of the 12th grade. And in the year 2018, we combined the, first, the last two years of the high school content to be in the test. And in the year 2019, we combined three years content in the curriculum to uh, base on to design the test. The question is, uh, the announcement doesn't say clearly about which curriculum, the seven-year program or the ten-year program that we are applying in order to design the test. And for this, I would like to provide some background information that in Vietnam, we have two programs for teaching English now. The seven-year program starting from K6 to K12, and the ten-year program starting from K3 to K12. So, the, the, 10-year program have just been uh, issued last year, in the year 2018. And uh, so, there's a, a question about the, the last year's test, like the, which is about three months ago, uh, five months ago, and which curriculum have been applied in that test. Uh, next, I'm going to say about the content structure of the test. From the year, as you can see, there are some uh, variations. <laughs> in the year 2015 and the year 2016, especially in terms of the writing section. In the, the other section, you don't see much change, but in the writing section, you see that in, uh, within that two years, there is some change in the writing question time. And in the year 2017, up to now, the format becomes fixed with this 16 and 16 question on grammar and vocabulary, Two questions on communicative functions, three passages of reading with 20 MCQ questions. Uh, in terms of writing, now uh, the writing is also conducted using the MCQ. And there are two sentence combination and three sentence paraphrasing questions. For pronunciation, we have four questions. And for sentence error connection, uh, correction, we have three MCQ questions. And most of the questions, according to uh, the public version uh, of the test specification, most of the questions are at the understanding level of using English. Uh, this is some sample question uh, to bring you even closer to the practice of high school test in Vietnam, high school exit test in Vietnam. So the sample test. Uh, sentence error correction is like this, so the student have to choose A, B, or C, or D where they find the error. And sample writing question is like this. This is uh, the first example is uh, uh, paraphrasing technique, so students have to choose the answer uh, that best represents uh, the meaning of the given statement. And uh, the next the question 29 is given as uh, uh, MCQ, the student have to choose A, B, or C, or D that show the, uh, the best sentence that combine the two given sentences. So that is some uh, sample writing question. And uh, uh, some changes have been seen in, uh, from the year 2015 and 2016 to the, year, uh, to the new format, the current format, is that the number of vocabulary and grammar and question questions have decreased from 20 to 24 to 16. And the writing question time has also been changed from sentence rewriting and paragraph writing to MCQ, something, uh, uh, something that is opposite to the trend in China uh, that Karen had just mentioned before. So Karen has mentioned that China, they, cha they change from error correction to practical writing, and here we change from practical writing and direct writing to MCQ. Okay. And the number of reading questions has also decreased from 30 to 20. The number of pronunciation and sentence error correction sentences decreased largely. So these are some major changes up to now. Uh, there are some existing studies on the current test of English for high school examination, uh, but they are not uh, published. Uh, they are mostly internal studies run by Moet. Uh, the Ministry of Education and Training in Vietnam and uh, uh, the project of National Foreign Language Project. And here I can show you some statistics showing some very initial finding of this study. But I think 99% of the results of the internal uh, validation study are kept confidential. Uh, here, for example, the, uh, they have run 
the, uh, the, the kind of uh, analysis on the vocabulary question difficulty and to show that most of the questions are at the B1 level and a few of the questions are at the higher level, higher than B1 level, according to the CEFR. And also for the grammar question, they also run analysis and show that most of the questions are uh, uh, above B1 level and a smaller percentage of the question are from BA1 to B1 level. And also they have run the, the analysis of the input of the reading, you know that there are three passages of reading and then we have run the analysis for the difficulty of the uh, reading input. And so we have also come up with some results that most of the question and most of the reading uh, passage are at A1 to B1 level. And so this result can show that uh, in general, most of the test questions and the reading passages are at the level the students are able to, to reach after the test, which is B1. Okay. Uh, so well, with uh, so limited results, actually the Ministry and the National Foreign Language Project wanted to do more study on, on the high school examination results. And so uh, some areas of focus for the National Foreign Language Project is to do validation studies on those tests of the recent years. And also, we would like to find out the watchback of these tests on the participants' processes and products. And also, we may want to find out uh, the relationship between the high school examination results in English and other aspects such as the student employability and other educational goals. Uh, I'm going to be uh, focusing on one part of uh, the focus, which is the watchback on the participant processes. Uh, in, uh, for, for teachers who may not understand the word watchback, uh, and we talk about uh, the word watchback from the morning to now, but I would like to bring about some definition of the word watchback according to some uh, scholars. And uh, they, uh, the word watchback is often defined uh, together with other similar words such as consequences or, in, or impact or uh, in influence. And so this is the definition, the extent to which the text influences language teachers and learners to do things they would not otherwise necessarily do. So, uh, so we would like to find out the watchback of the high school exit test in English. Uh, we would, um, at the moment, the, uh, the initial idea for this research has been, uh, uh, has been brainstormed and we think we would base on a very famous model of washback by Bailey in the, 19, in the year 1996 who say that the test may have an impact on the learners, the teachers and other people involved in developing the test and uh, that these people conduct different tasks in language assessment, as Jonathan has mentioned, and so uh, the test, the design of the format of the test, may uh, may have may lead to different influence on their processes and their products, including like some of them can be seen here. Uh, particularly, we would like we would like to see how the current format of the high school exit test in English can affect teachers and students in the classroom. And we based on a, also a very famous model by Anderson and Moore. And uh, we think that perhaps the current format of the test may have an impact on the teachers in some aspect, such as what teachers teach, how teachers, how teachers teach, the rate and the sequence and the degree of and depth of their teaching, the attitudes to teaching contents and methods, the watchback for all uh, of the teacher, but some of the watchback may differ from one teacher to another. So that's what we, we would like to find out. And later on, we also, uh, at the same time, we also want to find out whether the current format of the high school exit test in English may have an effect on the student, the student, uh, about how, what they learn and how they learn, the rate, the sequence and degree and depth of their learning, and the attitude to learning, and the watchback, we also uh, think that it will have 
some watchback for all the students, but some watchback will be different for students of some group, such as the seven-year uh, program student and the ten-year program student. So that uh, I hope that I have been uh, clearer to you about the high school exit test in Vietnam in English. And now I'm going to uh, uh, to give the stage to uh, Dr. Mai Hi who is going to show you more <laughs> details about the future chance of the high school exit uh, of our study on um, high school exit test in Vietnam. Thank you. Well, thank you, Karen and Mai, for your interesting presentations and your summary of what we are working on. And as you can see, that uh, Karen's uh, summarized the uh, current trends in assessment and testing specifically for graduation at the high school level in different countries, in, uh, and in, in South Korea, and an example of a tech format in, uh, in China, which, are, which we think that uh, to some extent are related to the case in Vietnam. And also, and my, I uh, shared with you the text format of Vietnam in recent years trends as well. And what we are working on right now, we are, we are studying the watch back of the test of teaching and learning and other stakeholders as well as well. Uh, Jonathan said we are the other stakeholders of testing assessment. And um, from the, our study, from international uh, experience uh, practice and uh, the literacy, uh, the literature as well, and uh, we will and also the watch back results and we studied on the existing text format of Vietnam uh, with the structures and the contents, the construct of the test as well. And as you can uh, see that there are changes in Vietnam in uh, recent years uh, the, about the general education curriculum of Vietnam. Okay. So, uh, the uh, Ministry of Education and Training of Vietnam has just uh, launched the new curriculum for Vietnam for general education. And this is going to be implemented in the academic year of 2020 and 2021. And in the uh, curriculum, English is uh, a, a compulsory subject and mandatory from grade 2 to grade 12. And to be implemented from the academic year of 2022 and 2023. And uh, actually, you know that uh, with, within the scope of the NFLP, uh, the cities are called the 10-year ten, ten program, program of English from grade 3 to grade 12. And this was actually implemented uh, since the, the academic year 2010 and 2012 up to now. And many, uh, in many cities, for example, in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City, all, almost all the schools are, are delivering this 10-year program to the Learners. And that's why I mentioned whether or not the uh, current test, high school exist test covers the seven year program or the ten years program or both. Right? And that's what also the content that we are working on. And with, let's be introduced to use a new in this curriculum of the ten year programs. Okay, so you can see that there are changes in uh, the the aims and objectives of the curriculum, the English curriculum, as Karen also mentioned, to change from the grammar translation approach to the CRT approach. And you can see that for assessment and testing, uh, we focus on assessment for learning. That's what also the aim of the, the symposium uh, is this today, in these two days. And also uh, we the approach that focuses on the learning process or the learner the learner centers. And also uh, one of the very important trends is that we use the curriculum based on the competences to develop the competences of the learner. So this is, uh, we want to see the progresses of the learner in uses of the language. Okay, not just the knowledge of language, but the language in use as well. So that's very important. So uh, in order to know the language in, in progresses of the using the languages of the learner, this is important that we should have also speaking and writing components as well, right? And in the uh, current test, we just have the way the uh, grammar, uh, like Mike, Mike mentioned, grammar, uh, pronunciations, uh, structures, uh, vocabulary, reading, and other writing, but just as the indirect writing, right? And um, 
So for, with this new curriculum, we aim, uh, the ultimate aim is that the learners want to reach the B1 level by the end of grade 12. So from beginning to grade 12. And so, that's the chance. So that the chance of the curriculum, the chance of contents and textbooks as well, and teaching, uh, teaching methodology as well. So, for the chance. So, what we should do, of course you know, right? So that is, just to stay with you, the chances in the, uh, the design of the, of the graduation assessment. Okay? So, uh, recently the Ministry of Education and Training proposed that the government that in 2020, we're not going to change the format of the test, the English test, but from 2021 upward, they're going to be changes. So in 2021, we can focus on the piloting of using computer-based testing for the uh, high school age graduation test. And, and uh, we will also pilot that the students going to have decisions to select whether they're going to take, the, they're going to have the, uh, the diploma issued or say issued by the schools or by the government, by the ministry, by the government. There are two options. If they want to take only, just only the uh, certificates or the diplomas of the schools, they are not going to take the national test. Okay? And if they want to go to take the, the national certification, so they should take the national test. So the test uh, is up to the, so whether or not they take the test up to the decision of the learners. And uh, for the national certification with the national test, test, so the university and colleges gonna have the chance to select them for their uh, entrance requirement, and also they're gonna based on the uh, graduation scores of the student from the schools as well. So computer testing, computer based testing, and also we have two options for the learners. So from 2021, there are going to be chances in the graduation, the high school graduation test. Okay. So whether it's the school exams or the national exams, we need the text. Right? And, and that's why we formed a team to do the research, to develop the text format for the new curriculum. And also from, from now to 2025. Uh, because in the system there are there are going to be two programs, the seven year programs and the ten years programs. And we will add also the changes in the uh, delivery of the test. So the existing test format is going to be changed as well from now to 2025 for the existing uh, uh, visuals of the two programs, seven and ten, and, also, and another bigger change from in 2026 for the ten year programs only. Okay. So, we are now implementing, as I mentioned, international best practice and say, and also we look at the West Bank, the impacts of the test on the teaching and learning process, and uh, to design a more appropriate test format for Vietnam. So there are going to be two phases. Phase one is we look at why do we have uh, to propose a new test or new tests. And Phase two, what should the test look like? And phase three, we propose the format to the uh, high school, the formats of the test to the uh, stakeholders to see the impacts, the possible impacts or the ideas from the stakeholders as well. Okay, so for phase one, okay, we will look at to what extent are the tests aligned with the old and the new curriculum, the existing test in Vietnam. Okay, we do contain analysis of the construct of the, and the methods alignment, and we do we have exposed we do exposed opinions, okay, and we see we study the validity of the test as I mentioned as well, okay, and in phase one as well we look at the what's back and the impacts of the existing text on the on the stakeholders of the test. The seven year program and the 10 year program, different programs of uh, whether or not uh, the test has take uh, the impacts of the existing test 
different or the same, all the students and teachers delivering and learning the two different programs. And phase two, with phase two of the test, we will look at uh, the contents of the, uh, the curriculum, the content of the curriculum and the, uh, the common practice in uh, graduation and ex uh, high school graduation or access test in across other countries, and the common trends in testing and assessment and other uh, factors as well. And then we will decide the test format and the test specification of the test. And right now we have the test format and the uh, and test specification. Uh, however, there should be changes to those that we are applying right now in 2021 to 2025, as I mentioned. There's the changes. And not all the test items are going to be changed, but some of them, we're going, to go in, we're going to change some of them only from now to 2025. And from after 2025, from 26 and later, there are going to be bigger changes in the test format for. Uh, for the new curriculum, the 10 year program only. As you see in 2016, uh, we didn't uh, have a test, we didn't deliver a test on the uh, pilot program, the 10 years program to, uh, to, to students in, uh, uh, in uh, different uh, provinces that take, so piloting the 10 year program. And we applied the four skills testing, computer based four skills, four skills testing. Uh, speaking, writing, listening, and uh, speaking, and the result is that more than 80% of the students taking the test uh, satisfies the requirements of the test. So this means they take, they did have the B1 level of I guess, proficiency. So in 2016, with the more than 5,000 uh, students learning the 10-year program in Vietnam, and, uh, we expect that in from the, after 2026. From 2025, we can have more skills in the test as compared to the existing test in Vietnam. So that's phase three. We do we interview the stakeholders to see whether or not they are satisfied. They, they, uh, they think the format is uh, gonna satisfy their requirements or they think that they are suitable to the existing conditions in Vietnam, etc. And other conditions as well with the facility as well. For example, if we do the sp speaking and listening. That's going to be very difficult, very big issues uh, to the decision maker because of the, uh, the, kind of the uh, facility, the conditions in the, that, uh, uh, that the uh, speaking and listening require to have. Okay? So these are some of the content that we are, going, we are working on and we expect that next year we are going to have uh, more specific, more concrete results to share with you. And uh, before June next year, uh, we will propose a change to the existing test format, uh, the English test format. And uh, we hope that in 2021, we're gonna have, gonna share with you uh, the test format for the new curriculum only. That's gonna be uh, piloted from 2022 to 2025. So that from 2026, we're gonna have the fixed uh, from the test format for the new curriculum. Thank you very much for your uh, listening and